This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. We're at Latino Night here in Riyadh. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Christopher Eubank Jr. How are you, mate? Good. Every time I come to Saudi, I just I have this sense of just peace and and happiness. I don't know, it's like being out here, man. Do you not normally get that in your day-to-day -day life wherever else? Um, Vegas is not peaceful. England is not peaceful. It's fun, but it's, there's, no, it's, it's, there's too much going on for it to be peaceful in my mind. Um, even Dubai, I, you know, I love it in there, but it's, there's so much going on that it's like, it's just non-stop. Here, there's not, you know, there's only a certain amount of things you can really do. So uh, I, I, I can relax a lot more here, you know. It's glad to hear it. Um, well, before we talk about the inevitable, um, did you watch last night? And what did you make of it if you did watch it? I thought the, um, the girls, uh, Katie Taylor fight, I thought that was incredible. Uh, Serrano, like that cut, and for her to just keep going um, with that eye injury, I thought was, uh, you know, extremely brave. Um, you know, we all know that many fighters with eye injuries usually like to quit. Uh, not mentioning any names, but, you know, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Um, there was no quit in Amanda Serrano and um, that fight, you know, <laughs> it was a hundred times what the main event was. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. You know what, I'm not even going to say it's heartbreaking to see Mike doing what he's doing because at the end of the day, you know, he is a legend. He's, he's inspired generations of, of fighters. So yeah, if there's an opportunity for him to make 10, 15, 20 million, who are we to, to look down on it? But at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's horrible to see him in the ring getting hit by Jake Paul and, uh, you know, everyone's just watching it like, oh, you know, just praying the guy doesn't get knocked out. You know, it's, it's not what you want to see from your hero. You know, he's a hero to many people. And he's putting himself in that light of, like, you feeling sorry for the guy, you know? So that's, you know, it's tough to watch. But, you know, he made a great payday. He didn't get knocked out. I think, I definitely think Jake Paul, you know, took it easy on him which shouldn't be happening in a boxing fight that people have paid to see. But, you know, at 58 years old, if he had just gone out there and completely blasted him out, he would be hated. He's, I mean, he's already hated, but, you know, he would have been, people would have just been disgusted by that. So the, he kind of had to kind of prop him up and, and keep him in there. Uh, Mike looked great for the first couple couple rounds, and then it was just you know there was nothing, there was nothing to it. But you know it is what it is. I know he was asked after the fight whether he would continue. He said, "I don't know if he said this in jest or not, but he said he would fight. He said he'd fight." Of course he would. Of course he's going to take another fifteen mil to fight Logan Paul next. But we, you know we can't we can't let this keep happening. Us as you know, us as the public, us as the fans, we can't get behind this type of thing because it's just, uh, you know, it's it's not boxing. It's not real, you know. Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor, that was real. You can get behind that. Okay, um, right, let's uh, come away from that, Chris. Uh, speaking to Ben Shalom this week, um, he has. He told us two days ago that he would be making an offer to go for you to fight um, Conor Ben. He said to me tonight that he hasn't. That offer hasn't gone yet. What, what can you tell us in relation to that about him saying that an offer will be sent this week? That's exactly what will happen. You know, there will be um, 
there'll be numbers, there'll be dates, there'll be undercards, um, you know, purses, uh, venues. It's all getting it's all getting put in there, and it's real, and it's happening, and I'm excited. A question you probably won't answer, but could you give us an indication where it's most likely to take place, whether it will be at home in the UK or here in Saudi Arabia? The dream, the, the goal is to have it in the UK. It's, you know, this whole, this whole thing, this whole uh, story is built in England. It should be finished. It should, con be, it should conclude in England. Um, so that's what we're pushing for. Whether it will happen or not is yet to be seen. I do believe Turkey is he's coming around to the idea here. He understands the importance of it being in the UK. Um, he understands the, the, the history and, 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 he, and he loves the story and he wants to get behind it. So I think, you know, I think there's a good, there's a good chance that it could be in the UK. Will this fight be at 160 pounds? Absolutely. No questions asked. No rehydration clauses. No, uh, you know, no catch weights. Nothing that's going to give Conor Ben any privilege. He lost all of that the day he got caught cheating. I spoke to you immediately after your your win um, here in Saudi only a few weeks ago, and. <clears throat> That week was um, a very interesting week. You obviously were fighting in the middle of a fight week and you had that altercation. How do you, when you look back on that now, how do you kind of sum up that week, exactly what you said at the time that you said that Connor had kind of picked his moment, if you like, um, at a time when you were cutting weight to kind of approach you, that's what you said. But when you reflect on that week now, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, that, that's what he did. He he, uh, he waited to pull his stunt on the day that I was cutting weight, which is, uh, you know, extremely low and cowardly, but that's the type of character he is. That's why I don't like the kid so much. That's why this fight is of such importance to me. We need to get guys like this out of the sport, you know, snakes, cowards, cheats. Um, these are all characteristics of this boy and uh, I'm going to enjoy punishing him As far as you're concerned right now, is this your next fight as far as you're concerned? I mean, until, until the contracts are signed uh, I can't answer that question officially. In my mind in my heart, I want it to be you know, boxing is boxing. Anything can happen. But we are doing absolutely everything we can to make this fight happen next. Just coming away from Conor Ben for a second. Um, obviously, this was probably three or four weeks ago. Um, the reports about the talks regarding a possible fight with Canelo surfaced again. Um, there was a, a counter from Canelo's trainer, Eddie Reynoso, who stated that that wasn't accurate. Um, I spoke to Ben Shalom about it uh, a few days ago and he said that it was something that was being discussed with a lawyer and obviously Eddie Reynoso must have been not aware of the situation. What can you tell us about what was going on with that about two or three weeks ago? I mean, we were 100% in contact with Canelo's team, the people that are setting up fights for him. There was back and forth, there were negotiations. That is all 100% correct. Um, so it is what it is. That fight will happen at some point. When, where, I cannot tell you, but you know, I'm pushing for that at all times. Um, and now I'm kind of, I'm on track for that. You know, I wasn't on track before being a year out of the ring, being, being told about the in a fight seven weeks before. Um, now I'm on track. Now I have fights that will be scheduled and I, I will be active 
um, I'll be fit to fight in uh, a mega fight like that, of that caliber, um, when the opportunity comes. Historically, obviously, Canelo only fights on them two dates every year. Um, depending on, obviously, whether this Conor Ben fight comes off, again, according to Ben at some point in the first quarter of 2025, are you hopeful that, regardless of that, that fight could still happen next year, Canelo? 100%. I don't see why not. I don't see who else he's going to fight. What other names are there out there, apart from Benavidez, who it seems he's just not going to fight? There's no other names. And, you know, we keep hearing he wants to fight in the UK. That's me. Um, so, yeah, we're going to fight. Even if it wasn't Conor Ben, we're going to get a fight at some point early in, early in the beginning of next year. And then we'll be ready for May, or we'll be ready for the date after May where Canelo fights. We'll be ready for that call. In terms of a time scale for you, um, if an offer is being sent, obviously, a call, uh, you're saying, and Ben's saying, when's the kind of cut-off point that you want to know, right, that's my date? We're like, probably, what, 10 days, two weeks away from being in December. So when do you need to know, right, I need to know, if I'm fighting Conor, it needs to be by that date? Listen, the offer will be sent within the coming days, you know, because yes, we need to know as soon as possible if and when this fight can be made, um, because you know there needs to be a camp, there needs to be the media, there needs to be. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going to go into the build-up of this fight, so um, ASAP, you know, as quickly as possible. We need to have a confirmed. Uh, a confirmed situation, a, a confirmed plan. Um, so yeah, and I, and I think we will know, we will have the answer within the next week. You had your first fight um, with Jonathan Banks uh, in your last fight. Is this something that you can see that continues for the foreseeable future? Yes, Jonathan Banks will be in my corner for my next fight. Uh, I liked how the camp went. I like his mindset. I like his training methods. Um, so yes. I'm, I'm going to build uh, that relationship with Jonathan moving forward. Around three months ago, you outlined a potential hit list of four or five different fighters. Has that changed at all? You, you mentioned people like Kel Brook and that, Billy Joe Saunders and that. Has that changed, that list? No, it can't, can't change. You know, the, the fights have to happen. Those are the names. Um, you know, but I do want to fight for these world titles. Um, there are plenty of opportunities for me to make massive fights over the next 12 months every fight from now on will be big so three times for you next year is that what you're looking at I would love that but that is that is tough at, at my level that's tough to do if, if there's any chance of doing it then I will push for that but minimum two They've always said that the, the higher and the more elite you're fighting, you are only fighting really twice a year with the camps as well. You are. If you're fighting at them, those kind of levels, then two fights is what you have. Yeah. And it's, um, I'm not going to say it's a shame. It's, you know, that's when I fought nine times in my first year as a fighter. So to go from that to now, you know, trying to get two. It's, you know, it's a very big change. You know, it, it changes your lifestyle. It changes your mindset as a as a as a fighter. Um, but that's just what it is. Once you get to a certain level, you, the, you know, the field is small. There's only a certain amount of names that you can get into the ring with, and there's only amount of, there's only a certain amount of money that can be paid for your for your fights. So that's just what it is. Chris, if, I don't know when this interview was done. I saw an interview where you were talking about the situation with your father. What, what is that situation now? Has that changed at all? No. My father is currently not a part of my life, unfortunately. Um, you know, I wish it was... Uh, I wish it was different. I wish it was... something I could change. But it doesn't seem like uh, that's possibility at this exact moment in time um, 
who knows? Maybe once the Conor Ben fight's announced, maybe that will spur up some type of conversation, some type of uh, feeling that he might need to, you know, reconnect with me. But yeah, you know, as of right now, I, d I don't hear from him, unfortunately. I don't expect you to tell us, but is there a specific reason that you know of why that is the case in the situation? You know, it's it's very complicated. It's um, it's you know, it, it's uh, it's a mixture of things. You know, he has, um, you know, he had he was going through some mental health issues at at one point. This was a couple of years back. Um, you know, my brother passing away. Just certain things happening in his life. All kind of. It all came together and it just it affected him and uh, you know since that period of time it's just been very hard to kind of connect communicate um, with him as a father I think him not being a part of my boxing career you know it it didn't um, it didn't go down well with him you know, for so many years, as you know, he was always, he was always right next to me, or he was in front of me. You know, and that's just, that's just who he was. That was a part of his thing. So you take that away, which I did, which I had to do, and um, I guess he, he couldn't, he couldn't accept it. He couldn't handle it, or he didn't want to accept it. And so that had affected our relationship on a personal level, on a, on a father and son level, which it shouldn't, because you know this is a business, this is this is a career. This shouldn't affect the father and son relationship, but he does. He he can't separate the two. So yeah, I, I feel like it's going to take me actually retiring and walking away from the sport for him to actually then be able to mentally connect with me again I hope that's not the case because I'm planning on being around for you know a fair amount of time more but that's how it's looking at this moment in time but as far as you're concerned it's an open door from your your side and that that stands forever but pretty much of course it's my dad um, the door is always open um, to be my father door is not open uh, on a business aspect that door is closed you know, I am my own man when it comes to my career now business finance boxing um, living my life the way I want to live it that is that will never be controlled by anyone. You know, he was controlling that for a long time. He was controlling my boxing and he was controlling my, you know, who I was really. Um, publicly, anyway, my public persona. It was, it was always Chris and his, and Chris Senior and Chris Junior. If we're going on a, a TV show, we go together. If we go to an event, we go together. You know, it was, there was, the, you know, we were a team. And it was great, and I enjoyed it. But, as I told him, it got to a stage where I was like, all right, well, I know the ropes now, and I want to kind of walk my own path, because of, cause otherwise I'm always going to be in your shadow. He didn't, he see, he didn't see that as a bad thing. He said, yeah, well, who cares? Be in my shadow, it's okay. That's, that's his language. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he didn't understand or he can't understand me not wanting to be that. Um, because I was, because that's what I was for so long. Um, once the Conor Ben fight is made, I'll send another text and I'll tell him. I want you by my side. I want you by my side, Dad. This is history. It's going to be the biggest fight in the UK possibly ever. 
you should be uh, you should be in it together. So uh, we'll see what happens. Chris, I appreciate you sharing that because uh, this is very personal, obviously, to yourself. And I know you have spoken about it uh, before as well. I heard some of the stuff that you were saying. So, uh, yeah, generally hope you sort that situation out with your father and uh, you get back to, you know, whatever relationship it is. So, um. You need both, my friend. Uh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So, you know, every, but everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm happy. My family members are happy. Um, my team is happy. So uh, that's all that really matters. Happiness and focus and dedication. And being a good person, you know, being a good man. And I think I've got a lot of those bases covered. You regard yourself as a good person? I'd like to think so. I don't, I don't look at anything I do in my life and think, well, wow, that's bad. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't say those things. Um, most of what I do, I feel like it's you know, something that can be respected, something that kids could look at and be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Or kids' parents could look at and be like, you know what, I want my kids to be like that. Yeah, yeah. You watch how Chris does it, and 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 do the same thing or do something similar. A lot of guys in this game, they don't have that. A lot of guys who are in this sport, the parents of the kids, do not want them acting like, talking like, being like them, because they're, you know, scumbags. You know, you know how I feel about scumbags. That's what a lot of these guys are out here. I'm not a scumbag. I do everything I can to be able to sleep like a baby at nighttime. To be able to look at myself in the mirror and, uh, and be proud and be content and be at peace with who I am and what I do and how I treat people. There are a lot of bad characters in this sport. There are a lot of people that give boxing a bad name, a bad rap. Um, and boxing, it's the noblest sport on the planet. So there should be noble people in the sport. And there are, there, there are a lot of nice guys. There are a lot of good guys in there, but there's a lot of bad guys in there too. People like to call me the bad guy. Um, you know, when that bell goes, or when I'm standing in front of a guy I'm gonna fight, yeah, I'm a bad guy. Because that's what I have to be, to be able to go in there and hurt somebody and and, and get hurt and keep going and win and not give up. Sometimes I have to be the bad guy to be able to do that. But there's, you know, there's the fighter and then there's the man outside of the ring. A lot of people don't know the difference or they don't see that there is a difference, but there's a massive difference. I learned, I, learned, I learned that you can't, you can't be a fighter 24 hours of the day. That's what I used to be. Whenever I used to do interviews with you in the beginning of my career, I was never, I was never smiling, I was never joking around, I was never talking about, you know, I was never talking about anything apart from what I'm gonna do and how I'm going to do it, and that's all I cared about was fighting and, and winning. You know, now I can sit down and talk to people and teach people and advise and and philosophize. I don't know if that's a real word, but um, I was able to separate myself from a fighter, from the fighter that I am, to the civilian. 
You can't be a fighter around, around normal people, around civilians. You come across as weird and, and uh, it just doesn't work. You can't be a tough guy all the time. Unless you're, like a, unless you're a gangster, unless you're a criminal, which I'm not. Um, you've got to be able to speak. You've got to be able to be liked <clears throat> around people who aren't in the fight industry because they don't understand. Most people on the planet don't understand fighting or being a warrior or being, you know, being in the entertainment industry. They're just normal people. You know, so you've got to you've got to switch off sometimes. Um, and at some point, I'm going to retire, and uh, that fighter mentality, that fighter mode that I go into, will be switched off forever. So then I've got, you know, then I then I can then I've got to be a, a, a normal man for the rest of my life. So, um, yeah, I'm embracing that side now before I retire so that it's easier for me to transition. Do you regard yourself as misunderstood? I get so many questions about you, just from people, uh, my friends, and just in general. I get so many questions about what, what you're actually like. And you know what? I say the same thing I say to you now. I think Chris is all right. They look at you as you're a bit off key and a bit odd and a bit weird and a bit I don't know. I'm using these words here. I'm sure you've you've heard or whatever that you've been referred to in these ways. But when I talk about you, which I do, I think you're okay. Like, I think you're right. I don't know what else to say. Are you a bit weird, a bit odd? Probably. Is that your personality? Probably. But it's very very difficult to actually explain to someone away from you talking on a camera what someone's like out especially where we've known each other for a quite a few years but haven't known known each other if that makes sense you know anybody who gets into anybody who trains for their entire life to walk into an arena full of screaming people walk up to a to a ring with ropes jump over the ropes with gloves on and then proceed to punch somebody in the face and stomach as hard as they can for 36 minutes, you're going to be a bit weird or off key or strange. You can't be a normal guy living that lifestyle. You just can't. There's just no way. So, I, you know, of course I'm different. Of course I am not your average Joe um, some guys are much more relatable than others in this game, but I didn't. I, I found that that wasn't what enabled me to do the things I do. It wasn't what enabled me to capture the imagination of the public. It wasn't what enabled me to keep going when I was hurt and when I didn't want to keep going. I had to be, I had to be extraordinary. I couldn't be a normal guy. I couldn't speak normally. I couldn't dress normally. I couldn't walk normally. I had to be something else. Um, something misunderstood, if that's what you want to call it. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not disappointed with that. I'm not, I'm happy with that because it's got me to where I am now. Everything I've done in my life and everything I'm going to do in my life is from this person who I've been and who I am. And some people hate it. And some people fucking love it. And I'm, I'm completely happy with both. And, and why I'm completely happy with both is because I truly believe that the people that hate me, 
they hate me in a way which I can live with. And what I mean by that is, you know, I don't cheat. I don't bully people. I'm not an asshole to people in the public. Um, I'm not dark. I have, a, I have a clean soul. I know these for facts. So I know that if somebody hates me still, then it's actually most likely a part of um, the persona and the industry that I'm in. It's a love to hate situation where it's like, okay, he's the villain. Oh, that's you back. Yeah, that's, he's the villain. Ooh, that's just what they're programmed to do. You, well, you see the bad guy in the movie, you're supposed to boo him. But they enjoy that. That's entertainment. They actually, yeah, yeah, we're going to go to the fight and I can't wait to see you back so I can tell them to fuck off. Because, you know, that's, it's fun. They may not th understand it, but it is to them. It's an enjoyment. It's, it, it's fun. It's like it's a part of the, of the show. It's not real hate. It's not, it, it, it's, you know, it's not real hate. Real hate is for people who are criminals and pedophiles and drug cheats and genuinely bad people. The hate that they get, I would, I would hate to be in that position because you're being hated for a real reason. You're actually a, you're actually a dirtbag. You're a bad person. And people are hating you because of that, not because of you're the, the villainous character in a boxing industry, you know? You know, Conor Ben is hated because he cheated. That is a completely different type of hate to what I receive. You know, I couldn't live with that type of hate from the fans. And that type of hate will never, ever leave him. Ever. To the day he dies, there will be people that hate him for what he did. Some people, it, no one will ever forgive him. There are people that will just never forgive him. It doesn't matter what he does because it because cheating in the sport of boxing is a despicable, disgusting thing that people just can't ever really forgive once they believe that you've done it. You know. Chris, I've got to ask, sorry, what do you, what do you make of the, what the National Anti-Doping have come out with um, in the last week regarding Connor's situation? I mean, he's, he's cleared, right? You know, we say that like, oh, he's cleared. So yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's okay now. No, it's not okay. The guy is a dirty cheat and he should be banned for life. All of these guys should be banned for life. You know, half the guys in the industry today shouldn't be in the industry. But that's not what boxing is. Boxing is, a, is an industry where if you get caught cheating, you get you get a year ban, you get a six months ban, you get a two year ban, you get a fine, and then, all right, well, yeah, let him back in now. And as disgusting as that is, because cheating in boxing is, you know, it, it, it's so dangerous. You can kill somebody, you can kill people, you can paralyze, you can maim people in this sport. So to cheat in this sport, it really is unforgivable. So guys getting six month bans is, is pathetic. But this is the industry we are in. That's the rules. And, you know, us as clean fighters have to live with that. I'm not willing to, to cheat uh, just because I know that I'll probably be back in the ring after a year's time. I'm not willing to take that risk because it's not worth the pain, the mental pain, the spiritual pain that I would have to go through 
for the rest of my life, especially after I, 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 I retire, knowing that, well, that actually wasn't me. That was performance enhancing drugs that, that put on that performance and cut that weight and enabled me to take that punch. I want to look back at my career and know that that was my hard work and dedication which got me to where I got to. And I don't want people thinking that, you know, that's the, the worst part of it is people thinking that the only reason that you are where you are is because of something you put in your arm or put in your ass or took a pill. And that's what it is. Once you get caught with drugs, everything you've done, all the fights you've had, all the training you've done, it means fuck all. To, to, to a large portion of the boxing community. All your hard work goes to, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> he's just, you know, he's just, he's just like me. You know, he's just a guy that, you know, wanted to box and he started shooting up. And now, you know, and, and the performance and boxing drugs helped him win. That's all he is. I've, I've gone, I've suffered too much. I've sacrificed too much to be able to, to put myself in a position to have people talk about me like that. There's just no way. But some guys are willing to, to take that risk. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll cheat. And if I get caught, whatever. At least I got paid. At least I won. Um, and I'll be back in the ring in a year's time anyway. So it is what it is. Not me. Can't do it. Won't do it. Okay, <clears throat> Chris. Um, well, I weren't expecting this to run for... How many minutes do you think that was? 20, 25? Uh, nearly 40, actually. 40 minutes, wow. See, I'm becoming, I'm becoming like my old man as, as I get older. Right? My dad used to do this to me all the time. He'd just sit me down, this is, give me five minutes. He'd say it to me all the time. Give me five minutes. I'm like, five minutes? Yeah, he's like, yeah, five minutes, five minutes. 45 minutes later, that five minutes is still happening. And I'd say to him, Dad, what do you mean five minutes? It's not going to be five minutes. No, no, it'll be five minutes. It'll be five minutes. It's never five minutes. And now I'm like that. I'm like, all right, all right. I'll talk to you for, just, we'll talk for 10 minutes. That's it. After that, we're done. And now 40 minutes later, <laughs> we're still going. I was going to put this out tonight, to be fair, but I'm not going to waste this tonight now. It's going to go out Sunday night when I'm home, uh, back in the UK. Um, much appreciate your time, Chris. I know you're, um, I'm not saying you're a hard man. You are hard to get hold of. But uh, you don't really do loads of interviews, do you? You do certain bits every now and again. Um, but I talk when I need to talk. Because if you talk for no reason, like so many guys do, it just becomes noise and nobody respects it and nobody really is actually listening to what you're saying because you're just talking all the time. When you pick your spots and you choose times to really spot them, people really listen to what you're saying because it's like, all right, well, he might not be doing another get interview for another month or two. Um, and to be honest, I don't have the time. You know, boxing is, is my life, but I've got so much going on outside of my life that people have no idea about. Businesses, projects, family, travel, property, crypto. There's so many things I'm doing. I don't have time to just talk go on podcasts and be on social media all the time you know, I, I have a life and it's you know, it's a hugely important that, uh, that I have that because what do you do when you retire so many of these guys I see them I see them doing commentary I see guys in there right now doing commentary I see guys training fighters that are never going to make it I see guys uh, you know in the gym still after they've you know they, they've won world titles and they've been successful and, and they don't have they don't know what to do with themselves after they retire and it's so you know that would kill me if I didn't if I didn't have a life to go to outside of boxing thank god I've, I've been able to find things that make me happy outside of the sport find things that make me money outside of the sport and, um, and excel in those areas. So yeah, when I retire, you're not gonna see me 
Um, <laughs> you're not going to see me sit ringside with a with a microphone talking about how well these guys are fighting. It's just not me. You know, I'm building something here, and you guys will see all the things I'm building. I'll, I, I will show you all over time. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. Chris Eubank, uh, the national anthems have just been played for uh, the main event here tonight between Chris Milton Smith and uh, Zerto Ramirez. So I'm it. sure we're going to go and watch it. Chris, much appreciate your time today. And uh, I'm sure news is imminent of whatever is next for you, whether that be Conor Ben or not. I'm sure news is imminent. Imminent indeed. Thank you very much.